Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on June 2nd, 2021. Uh, Lots of crazy chaos going on in the world, as it seems there is every day of the Biden administration. But before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim. I'm on the right. (laughs) <laughs> He's on the right today. <laughs> we don't have a far right, though. <laughs> it's the right. I'm on the far right now. The far right, though. Okay. As much as lib- uh, lefties would like to say libertarians are far right, you know, yeah. clearly not. <laughs> but uh, okay. anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, Tim is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. Uh, so let's jump right into the topics. Um, well, I tell you, one of the things that has become apparent uh, over the course of the Trump administration and and certainly now more than ever is, is this, uh, I guess, fake news and the idea that the media can just sort of say whatever it feels it wants to say about people. And they're actually might be held uh, accountable. Uh, we had a few instances. Uh, the Covington kids uh, sort of held CNN and uh, some others, I think, accountable. Uh, Washington, because, the Washington Post also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Washington Post, because they misrepresented them as having instigated some kind of a, a you know, a, a, a racial upheaval uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. at the monuments there. And now, uh, uh, when Alan Dershowitz uh, actually defended Trump in the impeachment, uh, CNN had sort of cut their tape to take out part of his statement uh, in which he was trying to uh, show uh, whether or not, uh, I guess, it, it was okay, I guess, what Trump had, had said or did uh, in his actions. And essentially, it all comes down to uh, Trump um, doing things that were not criminal, um, but essentially, otherwise, anything that I guess that Trump did would would essentially uh, to try and get himself reelected and the press uh, and the lefties seem to think that, well, you know, anything that's a sort of a quid pro quo, you know, uh, you know, anything that uh, gosh darn it, <clears throat> quote up in front of me. But essentially, uh, that's what they were trying to impeach him for um, in the uh, issues with the Ukraine uh, and the call, and I'm not sure if there were some other issues too going on there in that impeachment. But no, it uh, was it was it was a it was about a call to Ukraine and the supposed uh, quid pro quo that Trump supposedly um yeah um, um engaged in yeah. And so what Biden essentially said is, you know, anything that or not Biden, excuse me, what what Dershowitz was trying to argue in the impeachment hearing is that anything that was not actually criminal but was simply something that would further him getting reelected was actually something that, that every politician engages in. And he said, you'd, you'd essentially have to impeach everybody who's president if you were going to impeach Trump for this. And that was the case he was making. Well, the, uh, the, the CNN cut out the part where he said, uh, aside from anything criminal. <laughs> so yeah. essentially made him sound like, oh, anything Trump does to get himself reelected is okay. And, and that's what uh, Dershowitz uh, had a problem with. And so Dershowitz is suing CNN um, as uh, liable. And uh, CNN tried to have the case dismissed and the judge rejected the dismissal. So the case will go on. And this is kind of an interesting case, I think, for, for you know, a little bit for libertarians, too, because this also maybe constrains the media as well. And, and I, I know a lot of libertarians would probably have a little bit of discomfort with that as well, you know, if, if the media thought it was constrained to be able to tell a story because, you know, the, uh, somebody might sue them. So this is, uh, you know, ki- kind of an interesting issue, but certainly CNN seems to have well abused <laughs> the line of whatever, uh, you know, sort of telling the truth, I guess, and, and trying to, uh, uh, you know, giving them any of the benefit of the doubt as to whether or not they're trying to mischaracterize people in their, in their news media. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this story? No, I, I, um, 
you know, when we're talking about free speech, you know, we always have to be so careful about where you draw the lines. I mean, we know for sure that we know for sure that I cannot go in a in a crowded theater and, and shout fire and say that's protected by free speech because it is not. I cannot incite violence or I cannot threaten somebody's life and call that free speech. So all these things are not protected. So there are lines that we draw on this on, 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 on free speech. In this particular case, though, what we are talking about here is reputational damage. So what CNN did, which I agree is quite appalling, really, by it's egregious by, by every measure that you can think about, it's egregious. The question then become though, in their conduct, is it actionable? Can Dershowitz win a case on libel because of what's free, what, what CNN did? Now, I, like I said, I agree, what CNN did was quite appalling. However, I am very, 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 very leery of siding with Dershowitz on this, on this particular issue, okay? Because it gets back to free speech. And while I agree that CNN, I, I mean, I wish you, you, we, we, we could take CNN off the air because of this damn nonsense they always do and they always engage in, I think this should be a case where CNN, I, I, boy, I hate to be agreeing with CNN, boy. I think I have to agree that CNN should win this case because I think the free speech is whole even when they have done this thing that is so objectionable. Okay. Well, I, uh, I'll go on the other side. I'll uh, side with Dershowitz on this um, because uh, it's, it's one thing, uh, and if he's, he's got to win, uh, I mean, really, uh, before uh, we know for sure if, if, uh, if he ha had a good enough case to win. True. Uh, I True. suppose that, that's, you know, it's kind of like, let's, let's see who wins the game kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if they are taking parts of his speech that, that are, that are qualifying parts that, that explain what the, the conclusion is of the next part and completely remove those. And it, the funny thing was they originally had his entire speech and then they cut it and, and replayed the cut version over and over and over again. So, uh, and, and it hurt him, his reputation. So that's what he's going after them against. I don't think that's got an issue with free speech. I think it's got, it's a libel issue. I mean, you, like you say, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, okay, you can't, you know, give a false representation. All the, all CNN has to do, which they're quite good at doing, is put these false narratives out there. And then it doesn't matter if they get sued, if they lose the lawsuit, if they have to pay, if they have to redact the, the, the things they said, you know, for the next 10 years as, as a uh, underlying uh, uh, headline thing to each and every broadcast of theirs, it doesn't matter to them. They win on the very first time they damage somebody's character on the other side, which would be the right in this case, or if it's Trump, you know, so CNN lives just lives and dies um, by their uh, viewership, what's left of it, which is the real shocking criminal part, right? To me, to me, the shocking thing is anybody still watches CNN. You've got to be a brain dead moron to do that. Are you kidding me? Really? You still trust them after all the... <laughs> Stuff they've lied about, including the weapons of mass destructions and stuff to, to get us into wars. They deliberately did that. And that's been proven upside one up, up one way and down the other. OK, so, you know, it's just like, are you serious? You're still watching CNN. So CNN, go right ahead, do all that kind of stuff. I hope you lose this one so that at least it'll be on record that, oh, well, well, I guess, you know, there's you can't just have all upside to it to your defamations of character. You can't have all upside to your lies and, and you know, just, oh, let's leave that part out, okay? They, the viewers don't need to see that. 
we decide where up here at the top of CNN, up there, us central planners at the top of CNN, we are the ones that decide for you, you stupid viewer of CNN, which you are. So why are you even doing it? I don't know. But but Tim, Tim, okay, I, I understand your point. <clears throat> I am I am total in total agreement that what CNN did was appalling and very objectionable. But if Alan Dershowitz win this case on reputational damage, where then do we draw the lines? Where do we draw the lines? How about reputational damage? How about, you know, if somebody's angry enough about what they said or didn't say, what they left out or what they took out, uh, how about there, okay, at that point? I mean, you know, if they don't get bit back, they're, they're going to keep right on doing what they're doing. But they're still, but they're, but but even even objectionable language is is protected by by the, the First Amendment. Well, no, that's not. They said they didn't say the the qualifying things that Dershowitz said. So Dershowitz okay. laid the foundation, and they left that part out. And so so it made it appear as if he was saying. A president can say whatever they want, do whatever they want, even if it's illegal, as long as they want to be president. That's essentially I, I what, he, to, what he said. To take this to the extreme, suppose CNN just captured a bunch of words and then put them together of Dershowitz or somebody else saying them and then mm -hmm. ran that as though he said that. Would that be, because that seems to me to be the extreme of what's happened here. Now, I mean, what they really did is they just eliminated half of what he said. The first half. But, they but, eliminated but, the first half. That's right. Let's yeah. take it to the extreme. Suppose that they said that they, that they took enough words that, you know, Dershowitz had said in many different speeches, put them all together, and then he said, I am for murder, <laughs> right? <laughs> or something okay. else like that, right? And yeah, then they yeah. have Alan Dershowitz saying that to the camera in front of in front of everybody, and the CNN viewer is just dumb enough to believe that that's what actually <laughs> that's what Dershowitz actually said. The point is, sh sh that would be the extreme. Should that be illegal, or should that not be illegal? Well, that will have to be illegal because you have manipulated words to come up with with, with, with something. You're making new words out of the man's mouth, but. In this case, they are not making new words. They are playing exactly what yeah. Dershowitz said, even though, even yeah. though, they left out the first half to make it look like he was arguing that Trump is immune, no matter what he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which that's, Dershowitz that's, never made that argument. Okay, that's. But they a, just left out words. That's. But a in your narrative. case, in your scenario, Jason, you are saying. They're actually creating words out of the well, man's mouth. Well, well they're, they're actually using the same words. They're just putting them into completely unintended contexts. So, different order. In yeah. a different, okay, they take, they take, they take. They're they creating take new sentence. sentences. They're creating yes. new sentences with words yeah. he actually And string them together differently. Yeah. And, and yeah. that what you're yeah. saying? That, that, yeah. That's kind of, yeah, yeah. Right, but then, then they're making new words out of the man's mouth. Yeah. Well, well they're, they're making new sentences out of the man's mouth. Okay, new so sentences means, then. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. Whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. But that's manipulated language. That's not the same thing as what's happening here. Yeah. Well, well you, you know, that I, I do have a little bit for, for your side of the argument, too, as well, Leon. A, 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 the, uh, a, a fairly preeminent thinker on the libertarian side, and uh, you can see him at Mises, is Walter Block. And so Walter Block has, in his book, uh, Defending the Undefendable, has talked about uh, the case of the, uh, I, I think, the, the libelist, and should that person be able to... I guess commit should should that be I guess against the law? Should you be free to do that? And and in his opinion, you don't actually own your reputation. Your reputation is something that's in other people's heads. So the idea that somebody could could say something or potentially false about you now this isn't quite the same thing. They're they're sort of taking a statement that's that's uh, and and pitching it in a different way to make him look like it's uh, uh, something that he thinks that's not really what he thinks. But sure. still, as, as far as the damage to reputation goes, yeah, he, he seems to think that, well, you know, you don't actually own the ideas in somebody else's head about you. So, you know, the idea that you could potentially alter uh, their ideas about, you know, somebody is, is damaging your reputation since you don't really own your reputation, then you can't really, you know, I, I guess, claim damages for something like that. I don't know. Do you, what do you guys think about that argument? I, I think I would have a big argument with what, <clears throat> even though, his position will support my, my position in this case, but I think I'll have a big argument with him about not owning your reputation. 
your reputation is your livelihood. I mean, if I I came out of the if I came out of the um, uh, of the University of Oklahoma, I had an engineering degree. I had a little bit of a reputation because they spoke to a couple of my professors to know what kind of person I was. What if they had said said hey, you know, you know that Leon, you know, he, mm, you know he might, he might he might know his stuff, but you know he, he ain't really good to work with. What if they had said something like that? I would have never got my job. I would have never end up well because of that job i end up with my permanent residency card here in the united states god knows what would have happened to me that would have been serious reputational damage i don't own my reputation no i don't think so jason i can't agree with that even though water blocks position on this particular issue yeah. will support me no i have a big argument with that with that statement okay well i would say if dershowitz doesn't own his reputation then neither does cnn whose reputation really is the one at, 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 uh, <laughs> their reputation is the one that's on trial here, not Dershowitz, because he clearly said what he said. And, it's, and, it, and it was recorded in full and everybody knows. And it was recorded by the court stenographer or whoever was taking notes. Yeah. And, and so it's not the one that's. And so he's he's going up against a Goliath a Leviathan named CNN with the bazillions of dollars they have still, I have no idea where they get it beyond, beyond belief for me that they still have any money at all. They should be bankrupt. But anyway, this is their um, reputation that's on trial here, not Dershowitz because he clearly said what he said. And so I say, <laughs> Hey, have at it everybody. And may the best, Whoever um, win, plaintiff Whoever win. win, yeah, yes. <laughs> but good, good, good point. Good point about uh, Walter Block's statement, Tim. About if 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 uh, Dershowitz does not own his reputation, neither does CNN. So that's a very good point to <laughs> me. Yeah, that's a very good point. However, however, I think we all own our reputations. Okay, we really do because our reputation is our livelihood. What well, you, you, it may be your livelihood, but I guess the the issue is, can you own the idea that somebody else has in their head about you, as I think uh, Walter Block's point, and that, and, right, and, and really that's that's really what the reputation is. So I I guess it, you know certainly it, it's it's very kind of abstract idea here, but it it really gets down to the you know kind of some core concepts, and I I don't know that we'll resolve that today. <laughs> no, we won't. But but. Yeah, Jason, you're right. Okay, your reputation is is somebody's idea of perception of you. It's yeah. something in their head, but that reputation, that idea in that head, is what will give me a living. Yeah. And well, if well, if this show, if this show becomes popular, and we start to make some money and that kind of stuff, it's because people have some idea in their head that you know, oh my goodness gracious, these guys are great. These guys always have these great insights. Tim always tells us about Tulsi and everything else. That they, man, this is such a wonderful insight. That is in their heads. Yeah. But it may become our livelihood. Yeah. So damaging somebody's reputation could damage your livelihood. And I think well, that's, well, that's a big deal. Well, uh, Walter's livelihood was damaged by um, some false accusations in his uh, academia uh, job, job in academia. He And his friends, not particularly him, I mean, came to his defense and and even he, he his own uh, writings uh, or Walter's own letters uh, in his defense also. So, so I, I think, um, you know, I don't care who owns my reputation. If it's being sullied dishonestly, uh, if it's a lie, it's or if it's a misrepresentation, uh, of the truth, and uh, it behooves me to try to rectify it any way I can. And if that's a lawsuit, uh, you know, and that's then so be it. Well, there's something too that, that sort of backs up a little what you're saying there too, Tim. And that's that, you know, Ron Paul used to always, uh, I guess, uh, be asked about. Well, your constituents tend to get a, a a lot of, you know, goodies in these budgets, you know. And I, I thought you were for, you know, small government, and you know why? What? what why is this? Uh, why are your constituents benefiting so much? And what his answer was, and I heard him say this uh, I, in an interview on 60 Minutes, because it was sort of like a gotcha question. And I thought it was a really good answer. And it said, well, you know, I every year I try to argue with these people about we shouldn't spend this much money. And, and then 
Uh, but then they go ahead and they make these budgets. So I make sure that the stuff is in there for my constituents. And then I vote against it. <laughs> I tell everybody to vote against it. But if these, if these idiots are going to vote for it, then my constituents are, are certainly going to benefit from it. Yeah. So those are sort of the rules of the game. And yes. what you're saying, Tim, is, well, the rules of the game, regardless of what you think of who owns your reputation, rules of the game say that, hey, you can sue in certain circumstances. So yeah. you might as well take advantage of those. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, before we totally run out of time on this let me jump yeah. over to a, another topic real quick foxconn we've been trying to get to this oh. <laughs> crony capitalism and uh jane maybe you could get the visual up on the uh screen real quick uh, oh yeah uh, what we have here and um i'm not seeing anything so maybe no. i'll have to stop no. sharing and come no. back into it real quick okay uh so well anyway just a Let's bunch see. of guys shoveling a bunch of something. We don't know. Yes. It looks brown. <laughs> brown <laughs> <on color. laughs> well, uh, so anyways, I'm not sure if it's up oh, now. There it but, oh, there, there we go. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So in terms of Foxconn, this was a, a deal that Trump had, you know, this this crony capitalism and economic nationalism, the idea that these these guys constantly want our government to get involved in creating jobs. And so uh, Donald Trump was a hard push for this uh, company Foxconn, I guess they're from China, coming in and putting some production into, I think it's Wisconsin. And he uh, uh, wound up calling it the eighth wonder of the world. And so apparently they spent billions on this of government money and they barely got any jobs out of it because the whole project sort of fallen apart. And, and even if it had gone okay, they were still talking about in the neighborhood of hundreds of thousands to a million dollars per jobs created. And it's just a ridiculous thing. You guys have any thoughts on, on the whole crony capitalism it seems uh, it's ugly no matter which party does it so anyways but this yeah, is this is this it. is trump <laughs> uh, yeah Go well, ahead, Go ahead, it's it's, it's um it generally doesn't work uh you know there's times when you can have like a space program and you're going to pull all kinds of technologies out of it uh as kind of side benefits uh things like that that, that can help uh the economy uh war hey here, there's there's a good uh Money maker, right there. I mean, you can develop all kinds of technologies that you never would have had had you not tried to have some kind of defense, like GPS, for example, GPS satellites, uh, and all the jobs that that has created over the over the last uh, you know forty years or so, 30, 40 years. Uh, so it's uh, you know it's not without its success stories, but I mean, some of this kind of stuff is just you know, like Solyndra and. All, there's so many of them uh and of course the ones that um there oh there's knucklehead but anyway i'm sorry go ahead leon did you have something leon, about you want to jump in before we go no it, it, it just goes back to the whole problem of government picking winners and losers government deciding what's essential and non-essential i had more to say but we are knucklehead now it's patrol so it's fine let's go okay well as they said that box gone <laughs> And that is the sound. And this is where we try to say, uh, bring up something silly that some politician or media person said. This time it's Bill Maher uh, that we want to pick on. And Bill Maher is kind of a funny guy because he's one of these guys who constantly tries to claim he's a libertarian. <laughs> he's like, based on what? I'm not sure. I, think I have he's a friend the that does the same thing. He's, he's the polar opposite of libertarian. But anyway. Well, essentially, he's against the dr war on drugs. And so I, mean, I guess we can you know, hold hands on that. But he's constantly for big government and and these ideas of big government. And so he had a recent uh, uh, episode uh, this last Friday where he came out and he was essentially ta uh, attacking all of these Hollywood celebrity types who were coming out of the woodwork to uh, run for office, whether it be in the recall with uh, in California with Caitlyn Jenner coming out or people like The Rock or uh, Matthew McConaughey coming out. But uh, r regardless, um, you know, the, the things that the reasons and you know, I think I can agree with him that these these guys probably wouldn't be great leaders. <laughs> okay, I think true. Uh, yes, on the same page. But his his rationale for it is is a little bit scary and and very sort of anti libertarian. And, and so essentially, he seems to have this faith in central planners who are who are uh, I guess educated to become central planners. And so essentially, he says. Uh, 
high level government jobs should go to people who train for them and know what they are doing. And then he went on to say, I bet those people uh, who are in charge now, meaning Biden, um, know the answers to the questions that will come up. They don't have to look, uh, look it up or ask. And then, uh, you know, one other point, he says, no one has to tell Biden what's in the Constitution. And so, I, you know, this faith that he has in Biden, I just thought, you know, maybe we could burst his bubble just a little bit because um, here was, was a quote from Biden, which was not quite the Constitution, but it's Biden talking uh, during the campaign about the Declaration of Independence. And uh, let's hear. No. No sound. No, oh, no, no volume. Sound. No volume, Jason. Oh, okay. Darn it. Okay. Well, let me see here. So, technically. Go down to your little uh, sound symbol there. See what you get. Yeah. You got to raise your sound symbol. We're not, we're not hearing anything. <laughs> okay. Hold on a second. We the people. Let's try it one oh. more time. Certain rights. Okay, let's let's try this one more time. <laughs> okay. We fear our democracy. And above warning, not a joke, go. think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay so unfortunately we had about as many mishaps as biden did with this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, take, take it you got you, know, you, you yeah, got Bill to remember you got to remember this man was more popular than any person who ever won for president in the united states okay he got 80 million votes he sat in his basement this half seen our race is sat in his basement and he could make statements like that and he have made many of them. And yet, you know what? He became president. As for Bill Maher, who is our most wonderful, oh, he's a libertarian. He always said that about him being a libertarian. Every time he opens his mouth about politicians, he's ready to criticize a Republican or, or someone on the right. But he's a libertarian. Remember, he's a libertarian. I would bet you, if he had realized, if he had realized that Operation Warp Speed was executed by Donald Trump, he would have probably have a very big criticism of that. I am absolutely sure about that. But Bill Maher, don't worry, he's a libertarian. He loves us, he loves us all. He loves small government, but he just loves to see the expansion of government when it suits his purpose. Oh, he's such a wonderful guy. <laughs> well, maybe he should include uh, uh comedians in his list of people that shouldn't run for office. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I guess that leaves me out right at the moment. I don't yes, know. <laughs> yes, yes. Damn, Tim, how, how can you exclude yourself like this, man? Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. It comes, it comes natural. All right. Anyway. So funny with these guys so it's they have such faith in central planners the idea that yeah. that this this complicated job that it's really too complicated for any person can be done if you just have the proper pedigree for uh, you know and then you, you can come and lead us all you know and make choices for us all and determine when we need to be locked down and when we need to have our businesses shut down and everything else it just uh it's absolute hubris you know on these these, these leftists these leftists always think there's some wise person above, some little God above that could tell us the right thing. They could always tell us the right thing. That's what these leftists think. This is wokeness on, on steroids. Yeah. When it's funny, for somebody who is so against religious faith, he has so much faith in <laughs> G-O-V. <laughs> Big G-O-V. Not, not G-O-D. Not G-O-D. Not G-O-D. G-O-V for sure. <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have today for our show. So thanks so much for joining us, and we hope you'll see us at the next one. Thanks so much. Stay free. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.